Hello, my old school soul food family. Chef Jeffy back with another video. All right, y'all. Warning to people that don't like to hear me talk. For the first two or three minutes, all I'm going to be doing is talking in this video. So you can come back after three or four minutes and I'll start cooking. All right, y'all. I've had requests. I put out a picture that I shared with my neighbors a couple weeks ago of some food I did. And one of the items I had on there was hurricane casserole. And people saying, what is hurricane casserole? What is hurricane casserole? And and I decided I would share this recipe with y'all. Something I created four years ago, almost four years ago to the date. Let me tell you the history of this casserole and why I call it hurricane casserole. If you looked on the news four years ago, Houston area was devastated by Hurricane Harvey. It totally devastated the city, just put the whole city on the water. For a whole week, this city was shut down because it was just people housed on the water, businesses was closed because employees was devastated, they couldn't get to work. A lot of employees' houses was just devastated. And my neighborhood was no different. I was blessed with a lot of my other neighbors around here. My house didn't take on water. It got close. Every every few hours the water would come up as it would rain. It just rain, 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 rain. Then it stopped. It'd get up to my door and stop enough to recede. It kept doing that. I didn't sleep for a day and a half, y'all, because you keep watching your house, seeing if it's going to flood or not. But a lot of houses in my neighborhood, I was out on an island, but a lot of neighborhoods, houses two or three streets from me took on water. A lot of it took on a lot of water. So after a couple of days, after all this flooding had receded, the worst had yet become because people had to start ripping carpets out of their houses, because if you don't, of course, you know, mold started growing. They had to rip out sheep rock and getting tools, people trying to find bleach. It was just a very, very frustrating situation. And I reached out to my HO, H, HOA director, which I keep in contact with. She's awesome. What can I do? Because I was off. I couldn't work. I happened to be off on vacation, matter of fact, that week. It was in September. I was off on vacation, and I reached out to her. Gaynor, what can I do to help? I know it's people out here, because she had posted pictures of the people just cleaning out their homes and sweating and and just 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 tirelessly work. Look, what can I do? Can I cook meals for people? I know people, the last thing they on their mind is cooking and going to the stores. Supermarkets was totally, shelves were totally empty because people had wiped off all the shelves, participating, you know, anticipating the hurricane. That's what people do. They take everything off the shelves and leave people with nothing. So you go to the store, you have nothing in there to even work, even get. So anyway, my house is always stocked. Y'all know that. I'm always proactive. Yeah, I didn't have to go to stores and all that. I would do that throughout the year. I always have pasta in my house. I always have ground meat in my freezer. I always have frozen vegetables in my freezer. I always have onions, tomato sauces. I always have that on hand because I know in a situation... You, pasta, you can stretch it. Casseroles like that goes a long way. Hold on, y'all. Let me get this off here. So anyway, I reached out to her. I said, look, I want to do some plate dinners. I want to do whatever I can. I can't feed her 1,000 people, but I can feed her. I can feed 50 or 100 people easily for the whole week. I do it every day. Every, so every afternoon at 4 p.m., we met over there and over there by her home. I went over there with my SUV. 50, 60 plates in the back, hot meals for everybody. And this was one that was very popular. I think I did this casserole six times in in a whole maybe two week period. And I'm gonna show you, these are the exact ingredients I used in the very first one. I got bell peppers, onions, I have frozen peas, frozen corn, uh, ground meat. I usually have two kind of pastas on hand. I use, I'm gonna use macaroni today. But I usually use penne too. I like these two kind of pastas for casseroles. But I'm gonna use macaroni today. Uh, chai, uh, not chai, chopped parsley just to make it look good. Cheddar cheese, salt and pepper. I'm gonna show you exactly how I do it. It was amazing. I, unfortunately, the sad part about it, I hate when tragedy have to bring people together, neighborhoods together. We should always be together throughout the year, but we are. And after that, we have gone closer and closer. People know me more, and it brings people out. And people was helping each other, you know, rebuild, rip out carpets, rip out sheet rock. 
and I pull up at 4 o'clock on the dot. I'm never late. When I say I'm going to be there at a certain time, that's something my parents instill in me. You say you're going to do something, be something at a certain time, be there. So 4 o'clock I pull up, people waiting. I have all the uh, meals already in the boxes. They just pick up and go. Yeah. So anyway, this is something I created. So that was a five-minute speech. So whoever came back in three minutes probably upset. I'm still talking. So anyway, let me get started here. Let's show y'all how I did I got my... Uh, let me cut my eye on here. Let me turn this over here. Now, I got my pasta pot heating up back there. So what I'm going to do, y'all, put the oil in the pot here. It ain't going to take much oil in this pot. And, uh, First thing I like to do with this, with casserole, y'all, I don't like crunchy celery, onions, bell pepper, whatever I put in those three out I like to saute them down a lot till they translucent and salt. Then I add my ground meat. I just want, when I eat on a casserole, any kind of dish like this, I don't like the crunch of the vegetable. Some people do. I prefer it to be really, really cooked down. I think the more you cook it down, the more flavor you get to it. So uh, that's what I'm going to do first. I'm going to put these onions in. You can put garlic, but I didn't put garlic in that particular one that day. Uh, you can put garlic in this if you like. And y'all, this recipe here, this is what I'm doing. You can do with your own. You want to put celery in this, put it in there. This is what I had on hand, y'all. This is what I had on hand. But of course, every day was a different meal. But this one I did every other day. This is the most popular one. I had barbecue already in my freezer. I already uh, vacuum packed. We had ribs and uh, potato salad and beans one day. We had spaghetti and meat sauce one day. We had, uh, what did I do one day? Oh, I need chicken and dumplings one day. Every day was a different menu. And I did fresh bread. You know, I can make, bread is easy to make. I made a soda bread one time. I just make an easy leavening bread with some yeast one day. One day I'll show y'all those breads you can make really, really quick and put on a hot meal because the store, you couldn't go to the store and find a loaf of bread. Water, you couldn't find no pasta. Pasta was all off the shelf. You couldn't find nothing. So I just pretty much cleaned out half of my uh, my stock in my pantry and freezer, and I absolutely loved doing it. It was, it just, you don't know the excitement to see the people's eyes when I pull up. Like, yeah, here come the meal. Y'all, these people been working all day on their homes and sweating, and, and you're frustrated. A lot of them didn't have insurance, and they're just frustrating to them. They, the flooding that happened, they ruined their house, and the least they want to worry about is trying to go to a fast food place to feed their family and kids because they have no room and no groceries and stuff like that. So anyway, I'm going to step off. I'm going to saute these uh, bell peppers and onions till they get really, really translucent. We're going to come back with the ground meat, and we're going to finish this casserole off. Very simple casserole. We'll be right back. Okay, y'all, we back here. Now, you see how translucent I got these? That's what I like in my casserole. I want it to be very, very soft, the onions and uh, bell peppers. I just don't like them firm. I like to really get them cooked. Of course, the longer you cook them down, the, uh... Hold on, y'all, just a second here. Give us a second. Okay, y'all. I'm going to put a little garlic in here. I ain't going to do nothing but make it taste even better, y'all. A little garlic in there. I love garlic, y'all. And uh, this kind of thing. Depending on what it is. A little garlic in there. Can't, can't hurt it, right? Can't hurt it, right? Okay. Now. That garlic cook down just a little, and then we're gonna add our ground meat to this. Now, put my ground meat in this. You can use ground turkey, you can use ground pork, ground veal. I've used ground uh, venison sausage in this before. Whatever you like. Okay, y'all, let me season this.
A little seasoning in here. Put a little of my shake in there, y'all. Put a little shake there. See my shake, y'all know my sweet and spicy, huh? Y'all know my, y'all know my seasoning. And this stuff is not salty, y'all. Just flavorful. And a little salt and pepper. That's why I add salt and pepper also to it because my shake is not salty. It's all about flavor. And it's all about adding flavors as you're cooking. I'm telling you, y'all, I can see some of the neighbors. I, you know, be riding or walking through the neighborhood. Uh, I haven't walked through the neighborhood the last couple of months. It's been so hot. But in the, in the fall, I really like walking in the neighborhood in the evenings and just, you know, just speaking to people. And uh, a lot of them, they remember this uh, hurricane casserole. And it's mostly the elderly and the kids. I just can't just find them people like that going hungry. That that just melts my heart. I'm thinking of kids going to bed hungry, or elderly people trying to make a decision between their medicine and uh, a, a, a something to eat. You should never have to make that decision. And, uh, me and my team, we're working on something for the beginning of the year to kind of help more, especially kids, families with kids, and getting them, I mean, food or giving them vouchers to get groceries, something, you know, in your neighborhood. You have people in your name neighborhood that have kids and going to hungry. You got elderly people in your neighborhood. People don't even know. It's going to bed hungry, don't have enough to eat. They want to have to make a decision, pay their light bill or their water bill or the gas bill and then having something to eat and people with kids too it's not they lazy or that won't some people you have people have working uh two jobs trying to make ends meet and still don't have enough yeah so anyway let me let this cook down and i'll come back y'all here in a few minutes and uh and uh show you the next step we'll be right back okay y'all next thing i'm gonna do I'm going to add my tomato product to this. Get my tomatoes going here. I got my pasta just stuck in the pot back there. I definitely want to kind of time it. I want my pasta to be ready by the time the same time this my sauce is ready. I'm going to rinse this out a little. Rinse this out a little. Turn this down. This stuff will pop you in your face. I got a little marinara over here, y'all, that I use too, but I don't think I'm gonna need to put it in here. Okay. See how easy this is, y'all? But this thing, this one pot here feeds about 15 people. I got 15 to 20 plates out of this because I had other items on the plate because I had bread. There's something else I put on the plate. I gotta go back to my go back to my pictures, y'all. Y'all excuse me. I'm cooking a, another pound cake here for a neighbor. I, had to, I forgot I had to flip it out. See right here? I got a pound cake. I just took out the oven. I just flipped out. That's why I was looking over. It's still hot. You can see the steam coming off of it. That neighbor of mine, I'm going to surprise with a pound cake. They've been sick. I heard they've been sick about a week. So I always take a cake over there and make people feel a little bit better on it. So anyway, back to what I was doing. Um, I'm going to let this simmer here a few minutes now. I'm going to put my peas in here. And these peas are frozen, y'all. Frozen peas and, and corn. That's why I tell people, if you can able, you can catch sometimes frozen vegetables on sale. You can get the two little bags. Sometimes you get them two for a dollar. When I see that, I definitely stock up. Let me stir my pasta here. I don't want it to stick and clump up on me. And when y'all put your pasta in a pot, make sure you put salt in the water. Make sure you season your water, y'all. It's very important. You season your water good. Okay, stir this up in there. And it's like I say, this is just a way to stretch it. Of course, my mama taught me this, how to stretch meals. How to stretch meals out. And you can eliminate this, y'all, if you don't like this. 
And you don't like peas, don't put it. If you like green beans, put some green beans in there. Put some pearl onions in there. You be creative. Like I say, this is something I thought of on the fly. I just caught going through my cabinet. What can I make that's quick, pretty simple, easy, and can feed a lot of people? So this is what I come out with, and it's called, and I named the Hurricane Hap Casserole. And what was so bad about Harvey? It was supposed to be, it's, they say it's a hurricane, but it's more of a tropical storm. A hurricane, most time, I've been in Houston area 33 years. I've been to a lot of them. Hurricane will come through, kick your butt for about 15, 20 minutes, maybe an hour, and leave. Harvey was different. Harvey came in here, wrecked havoc for an hour, hour and a half, two hours, thought it was over. It come back. It went back and re-strengthened and come back again. That's what devastated the city, and it just sat here and rained and rained and rained and rained, and it happened at night. I don't know why hurricanes and tropical storms come at nighttime, but it was on a Saturday night. I never forget it. A lot of people was out. I think it was a big fight. Manny Pacquiao was fighting, or somebody was fighting, and a lot of people got out, trapped out in it because a lot of people was out at sports bars and, and stuff like that, and other people housing, you know, you know, gathered watching the flight, and when they come out, it was raining like crazy. And you should have seen Sunday morning when the sun come up, the news people, so many people were stranded. Freeways was underwater. Freeways I never saw in my life would be underwater was underwater. I never seen nothing like it in my 33 years here in the Houston area. Okay, y'all got this here. Simmery here. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to step off again. I'm going to let this come up to a boil. I'm going to recheck my seasonings. And we're going to put the macaroni in here. We're going to pour it in a pan. Top with ch cheddar cheese, y'all. And put it in the oven. Very simple. Very easy. I think this is more of a conversation video than a cooking video. If people don't like to hear me talk, they're going to hate this video. But I just want to share with y'all how this hurricane pasta started. And, the, you know, the experiences we went through in the Houston area here uh, during that time. Because I know everybody saw it on TV. And the devastations and things that happened. On TV. Maybe I'll put some pictures at the end of this video just to show y'all the devastation and how it looked. It just was really, and, and it was amazing to see this city come together uh, as, a, as a unit to help each other, neighbors helping neighbors. Anyway, I'll be right back, y'all. Okay, y'all, we back again here. Okay. Now, the only thing I'm going to do now is add my parsley to this. I'm going to turn it off. And my pasta's back there is talking to me and telling me it's ready. So we're gonna get that macaroni and pour it in here too. All right, y'all, let me get this over. I can drain my, I can drain my pasta off here. It's definitely talking to me and telling me it's ready. All ready. Ready, got that draining. here just a second here let that drain all the way off the pasta now all you're gonna do is add the, add the noodles right to this y'all simple that is now all I'm gonna do now hold the pasta in with this see how filling that is y'all you actually don't have to bake this. You actually can just do it just like this. But I'm telling you, the kids of all people love this. I guess they used to just eat macaroni and cheese. And they ate some with some vegetables. I told the parents, it's a way to get vegetables in your kids. You know, I told the kids, I don't like vegetables either. It's something my mama used to do to get vegetables into me. So anyway, let's get this here stirred up. Get it all stirred up there pretty good. And like I say, you can add more tomato sauce if you want. But you don't have to. Let me get it all mixed in here good together, y'all. Make sure you get all that mixed in. Now. Now what I'm going to do, I like to add a little cheese in the middle. And then we're going to add cheese on top. The cheese in the middle, what it does, it help binds it, make it a little thicker. That's why I put a little cheese in, in the middle of it. A little bit more. Because you know if it's too loose, 
and you put it on the plate. See how it makes it creamier? Just add a little cheese in the middle, y'all. And then make it a little creamier. See that? See how it changed the whole texture of it? That's a little secret, y'all. Don't let nobody know what I just told y'all. How to get your pasta a little. See how you get that little body in that pasta? See how it just changed the whole texture? That's what happens when you put a little cheese in the middle of it. Okay, now, we're going to pour it. We'll move over here to our, uh, let's see here to our, that's a little dish here. And I put it in here without spilling it. Think I can do that? Put it in here without spilling it, y'all. There we go. Okay, now. Side right there. Oh yeah. Just like I made this before, huh, y'all? Okay, now I'm gonna add the rest of that cheese on him. That'd be really good and cheesy, y'all. Really good and cheesy. And all I'm gonna do, y'all, put this in the oven. About 30 minutes till that cheese is nice and bubbly and melty. This whole thing is bubbling like crazy. And we're going to bring it out and we're going to try it out. Hurricane Harvey Casserole. Be back. Okay, y'all, we back here. Just took it out of the oven here. And y'all, let me let you know. I'm going to let the cheese is all nice and uh, bubbly there. And I'm going to let it sit here. About 30 minutes or so because it's too hot. It's really too hot to even scoop out, y'all. So, uh, yeah, I made, like I say, I made about five of these in two weeks when I, uh, back about four years ago, four years ago, when, my, when Harvey hit. And uh, what a coincidence because as I speak, we have a tropical stuff, tropical stuff, tropical storm that's going to hit here. And the Gulf Coast, it's, it's in the Gulf right now. It's supposed to hit, it's supposed to rain all this week, y'all. A lot. So, I don't know how powerful this tropical storm is going to be. You know, the weather people try to make it worse than it actually is. Most of the time, they're wrong. But we can only, like I say, plan for the worst and hope for the best. And uh, hoping y'all prayers that we don't get another tropical storm Harvey out of this one that's in the Gulf right now. So... Yeah, it's not looking good. It looked like Houston gonna get, if not a direct hit, it's gonna be pretty much a lot of, a lot of rain in the next three or four days. So y'all keep us in your thoughts and prayers that we get through this. But as always, I'm ready for anything. Uh, an advantage I have too, I was telling y'all before, in my home is gas. And this happened during Hurricane Ike in 2007. And uh, even, even though we didn't lose electricity during Harvey, I always have gas. I can always cook. I mean, I have to light the stove manually. I don't have an electric starter to light it, but I can always have gas. Even the electricity go off. And that's the advantage I have in my home. And I have a little generator, too, that I can keep my refrigerator freezing and all that plugged up. So I can always, no matter what the situation, if the lights go off, you have no power, I can always create meals out of my house because I have an advantage. I have a gas stove, so... Yeah, but anyway, I'll be back here, y'all, in about 30 minutes or so, and we'll scoop a cup bowl of this out, and we'll taste it. I already know how it is. I made it so many times. But anyway, we'll let y'all know how it is. We'll be right back. Okay, y'all, we are back. I let this cool about 30 minutes. It's still hot. Look at this, y'all. Look at that. Now it's got some here. All right, here. Yeah, let me show y'all here. I already know how good this stuff is. Up it. So see how hot it's it been chilling for 30 minutes. See the heat still coming off of there? Mm. Mm, 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 mm. I'm telling y'all, we come in my neighborhood, you meet somebody, I got to say, mm. Jeff Jeffries. Hurricane got the roll. I promise you somebody will know about this. One pot meal, y'all. One pot meal. Mm, 
like I say, you can put whatever way you want in this. You can eliminate whatever you want in this. You can put whatever kind of cheese. You're gonna use pepper jack, regular Monterey Jack, mozzarella. This is exactly how I made it four years ago. This is what I had on hand in my home. And I did the exact same ingredient that I used that day. And for two weeks, I made this thing five times in two weeks, plus other things. But this is the most popular one. I made this. Like I say, I can feed, you can feed 15, 20 people off of this one casserole. If you got some bread, maybe some other kind of, make a little salad go with it. I had, the one time I put a salad, all I did was, I had lettuce, tomatoes, cucumbers, a little dressing on the side, and this, and some bread. People were so overwhelmingly happy, they were. But anyway, I just wanna share this with y'all. Like I say, uh, we got a tropical storm in the Gulf here. Y'all keep us in your thoughts and prayers. Cause I don't know how much rain. We never know when these things come along in the Houston area, how bad or how worse it's going to get. So, like I say, we 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 prepare for the worst and we pray for the best. So, anyway, let me close this video out. If you like this video, please share, please comment, please subscribe, please follow my other social media accounts: Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, Twitch, Twitter, Twitch TV, Pinterest, and OldSchoolSoulFood.com. Remember the hashtag. Like I did four years ago and I do on a daily basis. Help somebody. Old school soul food. Until next time, have a blessed old school soul food. I'm not editing this out, y'all. Have a blessed old school soul food day. And I will see y'all in the next video. I love y'all. Bye.